Johnson's government liked to disassociate themselves from the cruel cuts implemented by the 2010 coalition government. However, for those who were subject to George Osborne's austerity agenda, the legacy of that time is far from over. More than anyone, it is Britain's disabled people who've been impoverished by a decade of Tory rule. So at Tory party conference, it was this man with cerebral palsy who challenged senior Tory Jacob Rees-Mogg. Only the day because of your policies. That's not right. Only the day because of your The government has a lot of support help you with this. Do you realise? If you, if you have a particular issue, do oh, contact, contact, contact you your local... Do you realise, Keith? Contact your local... You I would encourage you. You punish us. I am. We really don't. I've got a degree. I'm a youth worker. You took my job off me. Let me remind me. I had an attachment. I've got cerebral palsy. I've got a degree in youth The Tories took my job off me. Then at the age of 42, I had to prove that I've got cerebral palsy. And you're saying people get jobs. Your party shut my job down. You got rid of us. You You're a disgrace! Well, I'm, so I'm, I'm sorry you think that. But the government's it's, trying to provide as much, support, as much support as possible for rubbish. For disabled you people. took my job off me! And to help people you, to find suitable employment. You've and, made my life harder! Sorry, I earned my money! And, and now I have to claim benefits. That's exactly what the government no, is it Are you listening? I am. I've really got am. a degree. I've got a physical disability, oh, not mental. I spent four years getting a tutu to become a youth, a youth worker. Then, oh, you don't need youth services. Your benefits, disgraceful. The man making that very powerful point to Jacob Rees Moggs was Mogg, sorry, was Dominic Hutchins. He's 43, and he explained more to the Manchester Evening News about his situation. I've had cerebral palsy since birth, but a year ago I had to go through this process of proving I'm still disabled so I can still get disability benefit. I've always been very independent. I went to university. I'm a parish councillor. I was a youth worker. I drive. But instead of talking about all the positive things I can do, at the age of 42, I had to tell them all the things I can't do. Do you know how degrading that is? What that clip points out so well, and the point that man is, is making, is how the legacy of 11 years of Tory government is the precise opposite of what the Conservatives, people like Edwina Curry, people like Boris Johnson, suggest it is. So what they say is that what the Tories want, we don't want people to be dependent on the welfare state. We want people to be independent. We want them to go out and work and lead fulfilling lives. Why that intervention was so powerful is he was saying, look, I wasn't actually completely dependent on the state. I had a job. I led a very fulfilling life. Yes, I got support from the state, which was necessary for me to live a fulfilling life. But then the Tories came in, they cut the job because they defunded youth services, which has had so many negative consequences, as, as we know, for the people who, who use those services. As we can see from that clip, it's also had terrible consequences for the people who worked in those services. And now what you have is this horrible gaslighting situation where the Conservatives are saying, oh, look, you're on universal credit. Have you ever thought about getting a job? You know, maybe you could go get a job. Like, I had a job. I had a job until you cut that job from me. And by the way, while I used to feel like I could contribute to society um, with, my, with my disability, now you make it seem like this horrible burden where I constantly have to justify my existence to uh, someone who's, who's testing me as to whether or not I can get benefits every month. It's really, really inhumane. It's kind of disgusting is not a strong word for it, actually. The way that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have managed to really separate themselves from the legacy of George Osborne and David Cameron, even though they haven't reversed any of those cuts. So obviously they haven't, they haven't introduced those cuts because they were introduced already. But the same people who were suffering under George Osborne and David Cameron are still suffering now because while austerity might have ended in the sense that they're not still shrinking the state, unless they reverse it, then all that pain still continues. I think it's very important, again, to actually think about what is the deeper ideology that has led us 
to this kind of situation. The a cornerstone of cons- particularly conservative Tory capitalism is the dehumanization of people it casts out of its notion of productivity. So, you know, people who are not seen to be contributing in a particular way um, to a particular notion of the economy. And this man, you know, providing care work and yes, requiring some specialized support in order to be able to provide that care work, whilst is that something that is cherished and incredibly important to his community and the people that he has helped, it's not seen in the eyes of capitalism as productive or as, you know, economically valuable. And so it has, we have to be very clear. And I think that what was incredibly powerful about the way that he talked there was that he said, you know, I'm having to, to prove um, and, you know, prove that I can't do things. I'm having to talk about all the things that I can't do. And there he's sort of referring, in my view, to how the war on the disabled in this economy under austerity and under the legacy of austerity, which is alive and well, is that the war on disabled people is not a, an economic one. It's an ideological one because the administrative costs of means testing, which, as you took mention, even though, you know, the, the Rishi Sunak and, and Boris Johnson haven't directly introduced more of it. They have not made any attempt to actually roll back on any on any of those those measures. And so they are still in place. The administrative cost of means testing and creating these layers of humiliating and degrading bureaucratic loopholes so that people can prove that they are really disabled enough to get support and the support that they need. The cost of that is very, very high. Um, it's, you know, it's not much less and it's potentially even more than the cost of just giving people the support that they say that they need and just trusting people that when they're asking for support in order to be able to live their fullest life, that it's because they need that support. So means testing isn't about getting the right kind of support to the people who need it. It's as effectively and efficiently as possible, as we're told. It's about A, keeping intact this myth that the state budget functions like a kind of household budget and that there's like this finite pot of money and it has to be balanced in the way that, you know, a household budget needs to be balanced, which is an ideology of Cameronite austerity that is absolutely continuing through the particularly the Rishi Sunak model um, of, of public finance mon- management. Um, but it's also about perpetuating this kind of notion of like rugged individualism where the notion of needing support, even though like we all rely on each other in some capacity, whether we're disabled or not, but the concept of needing to have some form of support, whether it's from the state or whether it's from each other, is is so must be made so humiliating and so degrading um, in order to basically send the message to society that if you have any specialist needs, if you have any specific, you know, specific needs, and you don't fit into a very particular model of, of worker that you you aren't valued. And, you know, we saw this ideological war on disabled people coming through in the pandemic when elderly people and people with underlying conditions were talked about as if their deaths were inevitable. That When the fact that people with learning disabilities were more likely to be given a a, a the directions to not resuscitate them if they if they were, were became unconscious. So we can see through all of these these mechanisms, the absolute contempt for people who are categorized as disabled and who are largely categorized in that way because the contribution that they make to society and to the world is not seen as productive in a very particular capitalist and economic way. And I think what this man's story communicates so like significantly and so importantly is that we all have something to contribute and it is not the right of the Tory party to decide whose contribution is worth keeping and whose contribution is worth facilitating and who gets left to the wayside to fend for themselves in an increasingly hostile world. 